Hi, today we're going to go over the Machine Learning Coursera course, Logistic Regression Lab. We're going to implement logistic regression and apply it to two different data sets. First, we import our packages, numpy, matplotlib, and utils.py, which contain helper functions. In this first part of the exercise, we're going to build a logistic regression model to predict if a student gets in a university or not. First, we're going to load our data set into X train and Y train. Then, view our variables. So, the first five of ele elements of X train look like this, and the type is a numpy.nd array. And as for Y train, it looks like that. And so the zero tells us that the student has not been in admitted to the university and the one says that a student has been. The dimensions of our variables, we have 100 training examples. So it's a good idea to visualize our d data, 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 yes. So a helper function is going to do this for us. And we can see a pretty distinct pattern over here in that students with, in this part of the graph, get admitted to our university. And in this part, they do not get admitted to the university. So these scores could be, let's say the SAT, for example, where we have English and math scores. Now we're gonna go over the sigmoid function. Recall that for logistic regression, the model is represented by this. And g is a sigmoid function defined by 1 over 1 plus e to the negative z. And our job is to calculate this. Now, z is not always a single number, but can also be an array of numbers, like in this example. In this exercise, we're supposed to calculate sigmoid of z, where z is a scalar numpy array of any size. So we need to apply the sigmoid function on each and every single element of z. And we'll do that right now. So we want to return g, which is another array with the same size as z. So g will be equal to 1 over 1 plus. e to the negative z. And we'll use the numpy function exp and p.exp, which takes e to the negative z. And we'll run it, and we got what we expected, 0 0.5 for a value of 0. And all tests passed. Now we're going to go over the cost function for logistic regression. We're going to compute the cost function using this equation. And the cost function is basically 1 divided by m times the sum of all of our losses. So the loss, each and every single one of our losses is the cost for a single data point. And remember that the cost function tells us how poorly or how well our data is doing because it tells us the difference between the predicted and actual values. And so for each and every single data point, we can determine the how well the data is doing at that single point based on our loss function, which is this equation. And we are going to compute the cost function right now. So what we can do is, so we have x, y, w, b, and some other thing over here, and we want to return the total cost. So total cost, we can set that equal to zero for now, and we need to iterate over our array, and we have M training examples given by x dot shape over here. So we can iterate through our array.
And so we're trying to co compute this thing over here. And it might be easier for us to split the task into smaller parts. So let's calculate the loss for a single data point first. The loss will be equivalent to this term over here, which is minus y bracket i make this smaller minus y bracket i times log of f w b x i so we can use the numpy function over here numpy dot log of f w b minus 1 minus y bracket i times mp dot log of 1 minus fwb now what is fwb we haven't defined fwb yet and fwb is equivalent to g of wx plus b and we've calculated that before remember up there with sigmoid of z and z is equal to wx plus b and so z will be equal to w x plus b And to calculate wx, it is np dot, dot product between x bracket i and w added with b. And the cost will be incremented with, let's make it simpler, cost equals cost plus loss. So previous cost plus loss. And then we are going to divide the total cost by M. So it's like the average of all of our losses. And I know that was a lot, but if you follow the logic closely, you'll get it. And so the error is cost reference before assignment. And that's because um, we copy pasted it, typed it wrong. Let's see if it works now. And looks like all tests passed. Now we're going to go over a gradient for logistic regression. Recall that we use simultaneous update on parameters B and W in our gradient descent algorithm. Now we're going to compute the gradient function using these two equations. And so over here, I've copy pasted what we just wrote for FWB, because this is going to be helpful for us. Now, again, we have parameters X, Y, W, B, and arguments, and we want to return DJ, D, DW, and DJ, DB. We have M and N for the shape of X, where M is the number of training examples and N is the number of features. DJDW set as a blank array. DJDB set as zero for now. Now first, we are gonna iterate through our number of training examples. And we're gonna compute our terms inside of the parentheses and we notice that fwb of x minus y is the same for these two terms and so we can reuse them and call, put it inside a parameter error and only 
DJDW is slightly different with this extra XJ term. So for I in range of M, we have our FWB of I. We can compute our error term as FWB minus Y bracket I. And now we are going to iterate through our number of training features n. And set each of our w parameters. And it's going to be slightly different from the above because we have this extra x term over here. So dj dw bracket j is equal to dj dw bracket j plus this error term multiplied by x bracket i and j. And dj dw will be equal to dj db divided plus this error term. And once we're done iterating, we are going to divide by our number of training examples m. and all tests passed. While feature mapping helps us build a more expressive or better classifier, it is also more susceptible to overfitting. So overfitting can happen, has a higher chance of happening. And we're gonna implement regularized logistic regression to fit the data better and combat this problem. Okay, so the difference is that we're gonna add this lambda term over here to help the parameters fit better specifically the regularization term, which is lambda over 2m times sigma wj squared. So we have x, y, w, b, and lambda, and m and n as the shape. Cost without regularization is the compute cost function we just calculated, and we need to compute reg cost, which is initially set to zero. So for j in range of n, which is this sigma term over here, we are gonna add on the wj term, which is wj squared. And then we're gonna multiply this by lambda over 2m. So reg cost equal to reg cost divided by 2m times lambda, where we've set it to 1. And all tests passed. Now we're going to compute the gradient for a regularized logistic regression. And this seems complicated. And there are a lot of equations, but we are just simply adding this term over here, which is lambda over m times wj for each w, w uh, for w1, w2, and so on. We have similar parameters. So for j and range, then we are going to set dj dw at j to be equal to dj dw plus 
plus lambda over m times wj. And all tests passed. And we have the expected output. Now learning parameters using gradient descent. We are gonna see if the cost function is going down with the number of iterations. And the code is running a while because we are using a non-vectorized version like the like the above. That's why it was running kind of slow. Now we're going to plot the decision boundary. And it's taking a while. But we see that the cost function has gone down significantly from 0 0.72 to 0 0.45. And the decision boundary looks like what we expected, where the bad chips are on the outside of this uh, Circle, circular like graph and the good chips are the ones in the middle and we're going to see how well the training accuracy is which is 82% and we're done